Last month, I made a video on some luxury pieces that I kind of regret not buying, which got me thinking about all the pieces that I did buy, and in hindsight, I could have lived without, which are the pieces that we'll be looking at today. I have some very specific things to show you, as well as some more general types of products. I really wish I didn't spend so much money on. So without further ado, if you'd like to hear my review and my experience with some very popular things that are often mentioned as a luxury lover's staple, all the way to some more exclusive RMS bags that I should have passed on, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. My apologies if the lighting is a little bit inconsistent today, but I have a very busy day ahead of me, so I wanted to start filming early in the morning and the sun is just coming up, so bear with me. I'm sure it's going to disappear in just a second, but in the meantime, I hope it's not too distracting. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into talking about some luxury pieces and some things that go along with luxury pieces that I really would not spend my money on, or at least I wish I had known the full picture. And the first thing is not actually a specific luxury product, but it's something that will really often be recommended by luxury lovers. It's something that a lot of people on social media use to display their luxury collection and their luxury pieces, which is specifically the IKEA PAX wardrobe set but the same goes for all types of built-in wardrobes that don't actually feature doors, which I love the sound and the look of, but I really didn't realize how difficult it was going to be to stay on top of having a wardrobe that doesn't actually have doors because previously, before I lived in this apartment, all my apartments that I lived in as an adult, I was very fortunate to have a walk-in closet in. So I always had a built-in wardrobe where I could close the door and it was a much smaller room, but this apartment didn't actually have a dedicated wardrobe. Instead, it had two bedrooms, one of which is my primary bed. And then the other room I turned into my wardrobe slash my little studio, which you've seen before, I used to film right in front of my Pax wardrobes, which I have nothing against Ikea. I think Ikea is a great solution if you are trying to buy some, not only budget furniture, but furniture that's available on the spot. Because something that I found very difficult when I was moving into this apartment was the crazy lead times. It was almost impossible to buy and find things that were in stock. So what I love about Ikea is not only that they have budget friendly options, but the fact that most things you can just buy right then and there whenever you need it. And I really would recommend the Ikea packs set, but there are a couple of things that I that I want you to be aware of because I love the look of people, you know, almost creating their own store inside their home and merchandising their pieces as they would be displayed in a store, which honestly, I'm not sure if I would do just because I'm not the kind of person who will have shoes on display. I'm very strictly a no shoe home and a no shoe apartment. So all the shoes are staying in my doorway. So I'm really not going to display my shoes and my bags. I really don't display my bags. A lot of my smaller bags that I don't use that often I have in a safety deposit box and then my larger bags I keep in their dust bags. So it's not like I'm going to have a wall filled with bags, which is really not something that I ever aspire to have. But I understand that if you want to display your pieces, if you appreciate just the look of them and the simple act of owning them brings you joy. I understand why you would opt for a built-in wardrobe or a wardrobe set that doesn't actually have doors. But when it comes to the functionality of a wardrobe like this, you have to keep in mind that you need to stay on top of it because if you don't have your things folded properly, if your things are not properly color coordinated, if you just throw things in there that let's say have just come back from the dry cleaner and they are still in their plastic bag where they still have the dry cleaning tag on them, these wardrobes will look really messy really quickly. Of course, they look incredible on social media and they look great when you see them in a picture, but you always have to take those with a grain of salt because everything you see online will be slightly curated. So, you know, you have to be careful with it because these sort of wardrobes can start looking really messy and aren't organized really quickly 
even if that's not the case. For example, something that I struggle with is getting things back from the dry cleaner and then having them immediately taken out of the bags that they come back in and then putting those things on the same hangers that I have everything hung on just so it looks nice and uniform. That's something that you constantly have to do. And then another thing to keep in mind is that your things will get dusty a lot quicker, even if you have no dust in your home, if you have pets, I mean, I clean on a very regular basis. I pride myself on being extremely clean, but even my things get dusty and especially having Pi who sheds a lot. Every single one of my pieces are covered in his fur. It doesn't matter which shelf they are on, how nicely and tightly they are folded, they will be covered in pet hair, in dust, and just everything that surrounds us in the air. So that is another thing for you to keep in mind that these things you need to stay on top of. So what I'm going to do with my text wardrobe set is I'm actually going to hire a carpenter to create custom doors so I can close them off because I do love the system itself. I love the organization element of it. And I would still recommend the packs wardrobe set. But if you are not someone who has the bandwidth to constantly stay on top of organizing your wardrobe. If you are someone who can get a little bit forgetful when it comes to looking after your pieces, I would suggest getting your pack set with doors. Now, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of the doors that Ikea offers. So while I would recommend getting the base and the foundation from Ikea, I would suggest looking at some companies and there are plenty of them out there who specialize in creating custom doors and custom accessories for Ikea pieces of furniture. Nature. So that's what I'm going to do with mine. I still love the look of it. I still love what it does for my home. But I personally have found that the amount of dust and dog hair that I need to collect from my black pieces is just insane. Not to mention that I do have some pretty big windows in here and all the sunlight is just basically beaming at my knits, my jackets, not at my bags because all of my bags are stored in their dust bags because that is definitely not something you want. But sun can actually bleach your things over time. So that's also another thing that you want to be careful with. So if you have a really valuable and precious collection of ready to wear, you also want to be careful with sunlight. And don't forget that your pieces will be exposed to all the elements if you have no doors on your wardrobe. Now, obviously, if your wardrobe is in a little cupboard where people or where things don't have access to it, that's a different story. But if you have windows in your home, if you have pets, it's definitely something that you want to keep in mind. And I wanted to mention it here because these packs wardrobes are so insanely popular and they are popular for a reason. But there are a couple of things that I wish I had known because I probably would have had doors put on my wardrobe at the very beginning. Anyway, thankfully, it is something that can be done. So I'm going to reach out to a couple of carpenters, get some quotes. But the PAX wardrobe set or any sort of built-in wardrobe that doesn't feature doors is something that you should be careful with, especially if you're a luxury lover because your precious pieces will be put through quite a bit and it's something that you do have to stay on top. I'm not sure if I'm the only one who struggles with this specific issue. I don't think I am, but I have spent way too much money on things that don't fit properly that are now just sitting in plastic bags like this, waiting to be taken to the tailor or to be sold or to be done something with because I have bought way too many things that were just not the right size, the right fit, or even the right material for me. And let me explain to you why that is. There was a reason for these purchases. So in here, I have a pair of Hermes pants, which I bought, I think late last year. I'm pretty sure I shared this in an unboxing, which I still love the look of. I cannot wait to take this to the tailor and hopefully be able to make it work for me, but it has already been tailored, I think, twice if not three times definitely at least twice and it still doesn't fit and i know exactly why that is i'm not sure if this happens to anyone else perhaps it's because i'm a little bit impatient or i always want things that i cannot have but it has happened way too many times and i'm no longer willing to do this that sometimes i go luxury shopping i find something that is either sold out in my size or it's not actually being offered in my size which was the case with these pants so i'm usually a size 38 in rms pants but size 38 is the smallest size that Hermes offers in their menswear and they rarely if ever offer it to non-flagship stores. It's usually only flagships who will buy pieces in size 38 because I think it's considered a sample size. So 
I will try to buy pants in size 40 and then have them tailored, but they never fit properly. So that's exactly what happened with these pants. I could only get them in a size 40. We tried to have them tailored twice. My local boutique doesn't have an on-site tailor. They work with someone locally, but not someone who is actually at the store. So my poor advisor was trying to have this pinned on me and we just couldn't make it work. They really tried their best, but it's still a pair of pants that doesn't fit properly. And this has happened to me way too many times. I bought things because they were the very last one in stock or because it was a more, not necessarily exclusive piece, but it was a more unique piece that there wasn't any more of out there, which I am not willing to do at this point. Something quite similar happened at Chanel at the end of last year. I'm pretty sure I vlogged that experience. I went to Chanel just around the holiday season and I was shown this, honestly, it was one of the most beautiful pair of pants I have ever seen. It was a pair of I can't remember if I actually filmed myself trying them on just because they were so big. I think they were a size 42, which was quite big on me, but it was a pair of high-waisted pleated tweed pants, which were just one of the most beautifully made pants I have ever seen, but they were something insane. I think they were like over $5,000, 5,000 euros for a pair of pants, which to me was just mind blowing, but my advisor at Chanel did tell me that they were going into the sale, so they were going to be 40% off, which still at that price, I think it would have been still over 2,500 euros, which for a pair of pants is just a lot of money to spend and they didn't fit. So I told her, you know, if you can get them for me in the right size, I would consider them. Let me know if it's possible. I think about it. And if I decide that, yes, I'm going for it, let's order them because I wasn't going to have her order something that I wasn't going to buy. To me, that is just incredibly inconsiderate. So I told her, you know, let me know. And she said, well, I'm not sure if I can have them transferred because they're going to be a sale piece. So most stores will likely not give them up. But why don't you buy this one and then we can have them tailored. And I immediately said, no, that's definitely not something that I'm doing. Not only because these pants are incredibly expensive, but also I do not trust that most boutiques are able to make something work that is two sizes too big. You know, if there's only an inch that needs to be taken in or taken up, if there are tiny little tweaks that need to be made, there's nothing wrong with, but I'm no longer buying things that need to be turned from one size into another because I always get the shorter end of the stick when it comes to these sort of alterations. I had an amazing tailor in New York, but I no longer have access to them. So at this point, buying things that are not the right size, I am not going to do no matter how unique, how incredible of a deal I would be getting. If it's not the right size, the right material, the right fit, I am not taking the risk anymore. And I hope you don't either. I know it can be tempting, especially when you go to a store and you find something on sale and it's the very last piece, or you find something that is really special, rare and exclusive and you get it offered. If it's not the right size, don't do it. I know that FOMO can be hard to resist, but it is simply not worth the money because these are the kind of things that will just end up sitting on the floor of your wardrobe unless you take them to a tailor. And even if you do, it's not guaranteed that they'll be able to make them work. The next range of products that I was going to tell you about is branded t-shirts or t-shirts with any sort of emblem or writing or graphics on them. Those are things that I went through a phase of spending way too much money on. I would say that there isn't a single luxury brand out there, or at least a luxury brand that I often talk about on here that I haven't bought a t-shirt from. If you've been with me since the very beginning of my channel, you'll remember that all I ever wore was branded t-shirts, but let's be honest, most of my videos, or at least at the very beginning of my channel, I started filming during 2019, I think is when I started my channel, but I started doing fashion videos in 2020 and most of us spent every single day at home. So that was another reason for that. Anyway, I digress. The point here is that I spent way too much money on branded t-shirts, which are not things that I would ever reach for at this point. I don't even wear them to the gym or even to bed. Most of them I just have, well, a lot of them I actually had donated or I had them recycled when I was moving and some I still have. I have these sort of 
not trunks, but the storage boxes on top of my wardrobe. Anyway, I did want to show you this piece here, which I bought from Dior a couple of years ago, which I still really like the look of. I love the message. It says we should all be feminist. Obviously, Dior has quite a few of these sort of printed t-shirts. They offer this one, and then they also have one that says shut your aid. And this is not only a great example of the kind of t-shirts that I'm no longer buying, but it's a good case in point to show you how not dirty, but just kind of how dusty and messy looking t-shirts can get that you have stored in an open wardrobe because this is covered in dust, even though it's not something that I have worn in a really long time. I know I had this dry cleaned before I put it away, but since it's been sitting on my shelf and I think it was actually at the bottom of the pile, I just pulled this out from the bottom of my t-shirt pile. So it's not even something that was on top of things, but it's still covered in dust and I can see pie's hair all over it. So it's a good way to show you that things do get quite messy if you have them stored in an open style wardrobe. Anyway, branded t-shirts or t-shirts with any sort of graphics or prints on them are not something that I will spend money on at this point. I would much rather put my money towards a simple black or navy or white t-shirt that I still get from designer brands. You know, I do love my designer t-shirts. I did a video last year comparing some of my favorite t-shirts from different price ranges. And I'm not saying that I won't be buying t-shirts that are more on the pricey side, but I will definitely invest my money in t-shirts that are more plain looking and are more expensive because of the materials used, because of the cuts and the fits, rather than because they really heavily rely on any sort of branding or Prince. If you've been with me for a while, it's not going to come as a shock that I am fully in the cult of the road. There are very few things that the road does that I don't love. In fact, they can come out with the most basic, most simple, most boring black t-shirt and I will be all over it and I will praise it until the cows come home. There is something about the rose aesthetic that I just love and I'm very much aware of how biased I am towards the brand, but it is what it is but that doesn't mean that I'm happy with every single one of my purchases. I mean, to be really honest, there isn't a single piece here that I don't love the look or the idea of, but in reality and in practice, I feel like I could have spent my money elsewhere. Anyway, let's start with something that is really quite special. I'm not sure how many of you know about this, but the road does actually have a really small range of perfume oils. These are boutique exclusive, meaning that you have to go to London, New York, or LA to one of the Rose's very own flagships to be able to pick up one of their fragrance oils, which are made in really small batches. They are made by, I think it's a New York based perfume house who makes it for them. And they are a really beautiful range of fragrance oils. They have three of them. They have one that's called R, O and W. I have W, which is a really, really beautiful, really rich, deep, dark scent. I mean, if you love something light, something really happy and joyful, you are going to hate this. This smells like an old dusty musky church, which apparently is what I would like to smell like. It is definitely one of the most unique scents that I own. If you didn't know this, I used to work in fragrance development. So I do have a little bit of insight into the sort of the behind the scenes of fragrance development. Now I have never worked on fragrance oils. What's unique about fragrance oils is that you can create some really powerful scents because if when it comes to fragrances, it's really the concentration of the fragrance oil that determines how powerful a fragrance is going to be. So you probably know this, but an eau de toilette has the least amount of fragrance oil, eau de parfum has a little bit more, and then obviously a fragrance oil is 100% fragrance oil, so the concentration is usually 100%, or there might be some other carrier oils, but it's going to be a really high concentration of the actual oil that gives the solution its scent. So you can create some really powerful scents, and this is definitely one of those things that as soon as you open up, it will hit you in the face. However, it is one of the most expensive fragrances I own, and it's not the most amount of money I have ever spent on a fragrance. This, just for reference, I think this was like 400 pounds, a little over 400 pounds, which is not the most amount of money I have ever spent on a fragrance, but considering how tiny this bottle is, 
if you look at the cost per mil, I think it is one of the most expensive fragrances out there. And I really don't think it's worth the price for the projection this fragrance has, because as strong as it is, when you put this on, you will think that it will last all day, but it really doesn't. And it really doesn't linger around you. It's not the kind of fragrance that you'll get compliments on because I really don't think that many people will smell it unless you drench yourself in this, which would be quite tough, not only because it's insanely expensive and you don't get a lot of it, but also because it comes with a roller. So it's not something that you can just douse yourself in. And it's really not something that really creates this beautiful atmosphere around you. It's not something that fully surrounds you in a cloud of scent. It's something that stays really close to your skin, which might be something that you'll appreciate. I personally don't. When I spend this much money on a fragrance, I do want to get compliments on it. I do want it to be noticeable. So for me, this is not something that I would recommend spending money on. I'm not sure about the other fragrance oils. I did try them in store. I did like R and then O is a little bit more fresh and aquatic. I like a more dark and, and rich scent and it is one of the most unique scents I have ever smelled. There is something really quite unrefined and raw about it in the best way possible. I'm saying this as a compliment. It is really, really special, but I just really don't think it's worth the price for the impact that it will give you. If you're looking for a fragrance that is in a similar vein, it's definitely not identical to this. I would not call it a dupe, but I'm pretty sure that if you like this, you love Frederick Ma's Moon, which is not any less expensive than this. It's in the same price range, but you do get a lot more liquid for your money and one spritz will last all day. I mean, that is a fragrance that will enter a room before you do. So I would personally much rather spend the money on that than on this particular scent because as fun, as cute, and as quirky as it is, I just really don't think it's worth your hard-earned money. And again, it is a pain to get unless you live in London, LA, or New York because it's not something that you can get online or get from one of the row counters, but you do get this little suede pouch which says the row. I'm glad I tried it and I was able to review it for you. As you can see, I have been going through this. I've had this for just about a year and it's not something that I use on a very regular basis. I use it usually when I go to an event, but I really have not been reaching for it even then just because I know it is not going to, you know, create that scent impression that I want my fragrances to do for me. So this is definitely not something that I should have added to my collection. And then moving on to two more pieces, there is a pair of shoes from the road that I would not recommend, which I don't know if I'm alone in saying this. Actually, I know that I'm not because I posted about this a while ago and one of you said the same thing, but everyone else seems to love the rose. It's called the Mary H or the Dean sneakers. They are one and the same, except the Dean is offered for men and the Mary H is offered for women, but it is the exact same style. I'm not sure what the difference is and I don't even know which one I own because the row actually goes up to a size 42 in their women's line and I'm usually a 42 in shoes. So I have the black version in black canvas with a black sole. It's a pair of shoes that they have been doing for years. It's been offered in a ton of different finishes, colors and materials and I find these to be one of the most uncomfortable designer shoes that I've ever had on my feet and I cannot really put my finger on what it is because it is just a pair of sneakers at the end of the day so it shouldn't be that uncomfortable but there is something I think it's the fact that they are so flat you really don't have any support in the insole which makes it really tough for your feet to actually lift them also they are quite rigid which means that there is no band so you kind of have to walk around like a dog but I have to tell you, I have never felt as much pain in my feet as I do whenever I wear these sneakers. And it doesn't matter if I wear them for an hour or all day, I get the worst pain in my arch. And again, I'm not someone who is usually very picky with sneakers or whoever has any sort of issues with designer shoes, but these are by far some of the most uncomfortable designer sneakers 
I have ever bought and I really don't appreciate the look of the Marriott sneakers that I own because of the black sole. It doesn't have anything to do with the row. It was just my personal mistake of buying them in all black, but because I wear so much black, I actually like to add just a little bit of white into my outfit with my shoes and whether that's the entire shoe or just the sole of the shoe, it doesn't matter, but I do think that having a little bit of a lighter color at the bottom of your outfit will help to lift you and make your outfit a little bit lighter and the shoes do come in a mix of black and white which if I was to buy them again that's probably what I would go for but I really wouldn't just because they are so uncomfortable and it's so funny because anytime I go to the row they always suggest that I try these shoes on whenever I'm trying on a pair of pants and I ask for a pair of shoes or I ask for the rose recommendations they always say have you tried the dean sneakers have you tried the married sneakers we all have and love them and i'm like yes i have tried them yes i do own them and they are some of the worst shoes that are out there so if you have ever tried these shoes let me know in the comment section and if you have not i would really not recommend that you do so and before we move on to our mess i did want to give you a little update on my the row banana bag which I think is one of the row's most iconic and most popular bags. I think it is the first bag from the row that really took off before the Margot became the next big thing. It is an incredibly popular and hard to get bag. There is a reason for it. I have an entire dedicated deep dive on the banana bag. So if there's anything you would like to know about this bag from the sizing through the styling all the way to the pricing, I will make sure to have my review linked up here for you because I do stand by everything that I said in that original review of mine, but I do want to give you an update because I feel like anytime I reach for this bag, I have been wishing that it was just a tiny bit bigger. Now it does come in two different sizes in leather and there is an additional size in nylon, which I have been seeing the larger size back in stock. You know, when it comes to the row, it's quite hard to predict when and if things will be in stock, but I have been seeing it come back in stock online at a few different places in the larger size. I also considered buying this in the suede version just because when it comes to this smooth calfskin finish, I always wish that it was either a little bit more slouchy on me and a little bit more relaxed looking, or I wish it was a little bit bigger. And while I still love the idea and the design of this piece, I have been torn. I do wish I had gone for the larger size because I think I would be able to carry it just a little bit more often. And I do think that in the summer, it's going to be a little bit easier for me to use because I'll be able to carry this to the gym because when I go to the gym in the summer, I don't need a change of clothes with me. I usually just wear my shorts to the gym. I come back home and I take a shower here. But when I go to the gym in the winter, obviously I wear long pants on my way there and then I need to change at the gym into shorts. And if I put my shorts in here, my water bottle doesn't will not fit. If I put my water bottle in here, something else will have to come out. So you do have to compromise and negotiate for space when it comes to the smaller size. And when I want to wear it with a more formal outfit, it is just not the perfect shade of black. Even though it's black, it does have kind of a grayish charcoal hue to it. So sometimes I find that it looks kind of out of place purely because of the color, which you can easily get past if you don't wear as much black as I do, or you can opt for the suede version, which will have a much deeper, darker, and richer black hue to it. So that I don't think will be a deal breaker, but I wanted to give you a little bit of an update because I have obviously had the chance to use this bag a lot more since doing my original review. And these are basically my latest observations. I did post about this on Instagram that I was consider ring selling this, but I never got through all of your DMs. So I'm not sure if anyone was interested in buying it. Obviously it's still in perfect condition. So if anyone wants to take this off my hands, I would not be against it. And if someone bought this from me, I would have no issues buying it in the larger size. But since I already have the small version, I really could not justify buying the large one too, unless I could rehome this. In the meantime, I just continue using the small version because I really do like the design and I think I will get a little bit more use out of this in the summer. But I think just for reference, I'm 5'11". I think perhaps getting it in suede, so it would be a little bit more slouchy or getting it in, the in a larger size 
would be a little bit more proportionate on me. Who remembers when a few years ago, all the craze was the Hermes Rodeos. That was at the very beginning of my channel. I remember doing dedicated videos on my Rodeo collection because I used to get so many questions on them. I'm not exactly sure what's happened if people are over the Rodeos like I am or that they are not the hottest thing and they'll be back in trend sometime in the future, but I really have not been hearing quite as much hype when it comes to the RMS Rodeo collection. But in case you have no idea what RMS Rodeos are, which I doubt, but just in case you're not, it is one of Hermes's most iconic collection of back charms, which were actually inspired by really juvenile toys that were made for kids. So when people say that, you know, these rodeos look really childish and kid-like, that is the whole point. The idea was that you would break up a really formal look with something quite as fun, playful, as funky as a rodeo. If you know RMS, you know that they have a really fun and playful side to them, especially if you're familiar with the Petite Osh line, which is something that I have been meaning to review for you for years, but I don't think I own anything from the Petite Osh line and I was waiting that maybe one day I'll buy something, but uh, I haven't. So I can still review it. I can still share with you my thoughts without owning a piece because there is a reason I don't own anything from that collection. Anyway, I digress. Long story short, Hermes does have a playful side to them and the rodeos are a perfect example of that. These are of course exquisitely made. They are made of the softest goat skin, which is actually the same leather that Hermes uses for glove making. And this is a range of accessories that have grown into their whole franchise. At this point, you can pick them up not only in different colors, but three different sizes. PM being the smallest one, MM being medium, and GM is the largest one. They offer them in a ton of different finishes, different leathers, even in seasonal finishes. So they have turned these into little dogs and even a little Pegasus, which I'm sure you're going to be familiar with. But at this point, these are not things that I will be putting on my bags. I did go through a phase for a few years of me going crazy for rodeos. I tried to hunt it down in every single solid color. And I'm pretty sure I have, I own most solid colors. Yeah, I think I do. I think there might be a couple more recent ones that launched in the past couple of years that I didn't buy. But at the very beginning, I was very consistent with buying every single solid colored one. And I still like the idea of them, but I think I would have been fine just with one or two of these pieces, not that I really reach for them at this point. And even when I do, I will strictly put them on the back of my bags. I really don't think that Rodeo suit more intricate bags. So things like the Birkin and the Kelly, just because you already have so much going on. You have the twist closure, you have the sangles, you have the shelves that the sangles sit on when it comes to a Birkin, that the last thing you need is a Rodeo on the front of your bag, unless you're going for the chain Birkin look and you really love to accessorize and over embellish your bags, which is definitely its own look. And I can appreciate that. But when it comes to my personal aesthetic, I really don't need a charm hanging off of my bag. And if I'm going to put something on my bag, it's strictly going to go onto the back of the bag, just where there isn't already so much going on. But rodeos are definitely not something that you'll see me buying anytime soon. And the same goes for all back charms and bag accessories, because these are really quite expensive. And at this point, considering, I mean, all the money that I spent on these rodeos, I think I could have easily bought another bag for this kind of money. And they really don't add that much value to your collection. People can be quite they can get into the idea of collecting these pieces. But let me tell you from personal experience, after having one or two in your collection in different colors and different sizes, they really do become rather redundant. You will not notice that much of a difference. They will not change your collection quite as much as you think just because they're in different colors and different sizes. So if you like the look of them, you know, Get a couple, get a few, but I would definitely not go crazy when it comes to these rodeos, especially considering how insanely expensive they are at this point. And the last pieces that I'm putting a stop to, and I'm asking you guys to please hold me accountable for this, is I'm not buying any more exceptional exquisite RMS bags that are 
made of delicate materials because I am not the kind of person who appreciates just owning things. I'm not a traditional collector. I'm not someone who dreams of having a wall filled with bag. Instead, I would like to consciously curate a collection of pieces that I can actually use and enjoy. Now, I don't know about you. I know a lot of people will say that, you know, you should just go and enjoy your pieces when it comes to a really expensive and highly delicate piece. I just simply not, I cannot enjoy using them because they bring me so much anxiety. I always think that, you know, if it's not something that I can replace, if it's not something that I can easily get fixed, I will be nervous about using it the entire time. I carried my newest Kelly pochette out with me last week and I was so nervous about using it the entire time. Not only because the Kelly pochette doesn't feature feet, so wherever you put it down, you have to be really careful with that, but also because it's in such a light color, I was a nervous wreck about color transfer or marking my newest bag. The same goes for things like my pieces in heritage leather, so in box or in newer, more unique finishes like Velopto leather, which is baby soft. It is, I would say, the softest leather that I have ever felt. In fact, you can even leave fingerprints behind if you try hard because it is such a delicate and soft leather. So as much as I appreciate the look of these pieces, I'm really coming to the realization that they were simply not meant for someone like me who's not into collecting a large collection of very unique pieces. So there was one more MS piece that I was on the hunt for, which was a lizard bag, which I really think I'm going to be putting on the back burner for now, just because I'm never going to carry it. I don't go to places where I would feel comfortable taking these bags to. I mean, I really only go to the gym, I go to the grocery store, and then I go out for brunch with friends every now and again. I'm not someone who is driven everywhere. I mean, even in New York, you know, I used to take the subway and I had no issues carrying my more precious bags on the subway. Obviously, you want to be aware of your surroundings. And I'm not saying that I would get on the subway with an exotic bag at 4 a.m. in the morning. But you know, I, if I was going out with friends, I felt comfortable jumping on the subway. But that also meant that I was protected from the elements, whereas since moving to Amsterdam, that is no longer the case. I don't really take public transport. I don't drive. I don't get driven to places. So these sort of really delicate and really artsy bags just don't really suit my personal lifestyle. So I'm incredibly grateful for the pieces that I had the chance to buy the pieces that I was offered throughout the past couple of years, but I really think that that right now needs to be put on pause just because these are not things that I can use on a very regular basis. At this point, I would like to buy pieces that are much more user-friendly and things that will really suit my everyday life. But my friends, this brings us to the end of today's video. These are all the pieces that I wanted to share with you today, which I wouldn't say that every single one of these a regret because there are still plenty of pieces here that I still appreciate the look and the idea of. But I do think that I could have put my money, I could have invested my money more wisely. I could have spent this money on things that I would have gotten a lot more use out of. But there are still some that I love and I wouldn't want to get rid of. There are some that I really enjoyed trying, but I wouldn't repurchase. I mean, obviously when it comes to luxury pieces, most things you wouldn't repurchase, but when it comes to your fragrance, this is definitely not something that I would feel comfortable spending my money on again. Please let me know in the comment section if there are any pieces in your collection that you wish you could return or pieces that you still love, but perhaps it didn't work out quite as how you anticipated. I think that's the best way of putting it. Some of these things did not work as I expected. So let me know if there is any in your collection or if there are any just straight up regrets, things that you do not want to own anymore and you wish you could just return. Please let me know in the comment section. I cannot wait to hear from you in the comment section. And while you're down there, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate you being here and watching and I will see you back here with a new video really, really soon.